Good evening, this is Doc Severson with the Theonite Report for Wednesday, May 10th. I'm going to start off tonight's report with something that's, I, I think, just more interesting than really relevant, which is Snapchat, which is the latest tech darling for social media. And I'm quite familiar with it because my daughter uses it all the time, constantly. In fact, uh, you know, we basically chased her off of Facebook now. All the young kids are on a Snapchat, but apparently they have not been able to figure out how to monetize this yet, whereas they were expecting a loss of 14 cents per share and actually ended up losing $2.31 per share. So a net loss of $2.21 billion in this first quarter of their earnings. So I am a little bit heartened by the fact that it has dropped a little bit over 20% so far in the after hours. And so maybe, maybe just maybe, reality is coming back to the market. Now the major indices really did not move much at all today with the S&P going up a little less than three points. As far as the Dow, the Dow basically was down about 32 points today. And the only real gainer of note here was the Russell 2000. So the Russell 2000, after getting clobbered the uh, the previous couple of weeks, has already started to bounce. And this is off of a higher low. So, so far, this is still okay. And there's a lot of energy for this thing to run in the near term if we're going to have any kind of rotation into the Russell, which could be happening because this this chart that we have of the NASDAQ right now is just a little bit surreal. I've just I've never seen a chart that this linear that just keeps on inching up and every dip is bought. I mean it's just phenomenal what's been happening here. Now we've talked about at length why this has been going up and it's basically this subset here of stocks which is the Amazons, the Facebooks, the Netflix, Google, Apple, Microsoft, right, has been really driving things higher to this point but as I pointed out recently, we're seeing some very dangerous technical signals for this with every time that we've seen a signal that's shown this level of linearity to the trend. And you can see that overall, this is sort of getting into that parabolic territory where the slope of this, you know, the rise over run of this is starting to crawl into the infinite and that's always a very, very dangerous thing because if it truly does get to that point, a couple of dangerous things happen from there. Sometimes what we get into is a, a, a market that just gets end up chase, chasing after it, right? So all of a sudden it's, hey, wait for me. And so this rise at the very end uh, can become very, very dangerous. And not only from people that just can't stand the pain anymore of watching this thing, go higher without them on the sideline and we've we've had psychologists prove that 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 level of pain is actually much much greater than just taking out a simple stop loss the seeing that but also the other danger there is of course people that are going to be buying in at the highs and then watching it all normalize everything of course does eventually normalize I mean, if you want a great example of, of that, you can look at simply just silver and what happened, you know, in the 2009-2010 time frame when everybody was convinced that this whole new quantitative easing thing was kind of caused massive inflation. And we have just haven't seen the inflation come, at least in the manner that we're measuring. So what we might be seeing in the NASDAQ is we might be seeing kind of a secondary rotation. There are some B players out there. Now, it's hard to call these things B players, but they certainly don't have the, the cachet of an Apple nor the cash of an Apple, right? But when you start talking about NVIDIA and, you know, everybody was making jokes about NVIDIA before this point uh, last year saying, oh, well, this is going to come crashing to earth. But when you've got something that everybody wants, chart patterns don't necessarily apply. When you start to look at some of the earnings growth of this company, 46, 52, 46, 53, 94, buck 13, 85, all of a sudden they're starting to really, the earnings growth of this thing is starting to really just knock it out of the park. 
not only that, but also just what they do is fundamentally so much better than what everybody else is doing. All of a sudden, we're starting to see a real paradigm shift into some perhaps a new B list of the NASDAQ coming out. You know, things like Electronic Arts, which also announced earnings and it's just rocketing higher. I mean, this is, we're getting a so, somewhat of a secondary rotation here after the usual suspects have kind of crawled to a halt over the last couple of days. We're seeing this rotate into new companies. So this very much has a 1999 feel to it, although you start to look at some of the earnings numbers here, and it's a bit more than that. So you see Electronic Arts, you know, barely limping along, seven cents a share, negative 13 cents, zero, and all of a sudden a buck 81. Hello, that'll get your attention. And we're also seeing yesterday's darlings like IBM as a poster child for this of, of you know, past, past technical glory is just getting taken out back and just being shot because they're obviously just not keeping up with what's going on. You have to take your hat off to Microsoft for that because they easily could have become just an, a you know, massive dinosaur. But I think a change in leadership at the top at the right time was probably the right move for this as they've gotten into a lot more services out there besides just being an operating system company. So back to the S&P. What does this market need? Well, I'll tell you what it needs right now. And it goes back a, a little over 10 years ago is there is a little move and you can barely see this on the monthly chart. If I zoom in on the monthly chart, you can barely see this guy and it just barely looks like anything at all. But it occurred pretty much over most of it. Most of the damage occurred in one day where we dropped about 60 handles. And it was, if uh, memory serves, it was February 27th in 2007. A couple of things happened that day that just completely spooked investors. And that was, uh, number one, is the, the carry trade between the yen and the dollar was getting unwound and getting unstable. And that caused a lot of problems. Number two was Alan Greenspan actually came out and said that he predicted a recession. So, you know, uh, there we got it a little early, a little early because, you know, this was, but you can see that even after this little, little dip that was out there. All right. All it did was really just stoke up more negativity, which got unwound to the upside. So I, I'm looking at this saying it, all it's going to take is going to be one piece of unpriced in information, which is going to lead us to what I believe we're overdue for one of those days where we're just going to we're going to step into it and and find this 60 point downside day, maybe even 100 points to the downside. Uh, before the circuit breakers kick in and we find ourselves normalized again. We need some implied volatility. We need to get away from this complacency. The market is pricing in everything immediately. It is extremely efficient right now. This is not normal. So the best way to trade this market is don't have any preconceived notions in terms of what's going to happen. Don't sit out there and say, man, this thing is going to get sold off because we could see another 100 points to the upside on the S&Ps before we do see any kind of distribution. So it could happen whenever it wants to at any time, right? So you got to come into each day with a sense of, I'm just going to trade what's in front of me. I'm not going to predict what's going to happen here. I'm not going to conjecture in terms of what should be happening or what should not be happening or anything like that because I've done that before and it didn't work out very well. The market did not do what I thought it should do. How dare it, right? So the market doesn't owe you anything at all and it will do exactly what it thinks it should do at that time. Remember, it's just a massive organism with a mind of its own and it can do whatever it wants to do whenever it wants to do it. All right, folks, that is it for tonight's report. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.